Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and in this video, I've got something a little bit different for the affordable board. I've got a little miniature multi effects unit from Donner called the Multi Pad 100. From the box art, it looks like it is a Super Nintendo controller. <laughs> I'm getting a really strong, like a uh, pocket pod kind of concept going on here. There's something about it too, just the color of the plastic and the color of the knobs that visually this is like a medical device. <laughs> this looks like it would be something, you know, mounted next to like a hospital bed or you connect little things to it and you can monitor someone's heart or something. It is battery powered. Nine volt. Did it come with a nine volt battery? <laughs> I don't think it did. But it looks like I can plug it in with a wall wart too. All right, it powers on. So what do we have here? Let's take a look at this. You've got some amp controls here, a selector between clean one, clean two, overdrive one, overdrive two, uh, distortion one, distortion two, and then bass. There's a bass amp setting. Then you've got tone, gain, volume. Jump, jump. <laughs> Um, value slash drum, some sort of drum simulator in here. Modulation effects that goes across the range of a chorus mix, a flange mix, and a tremolo mix. A uh, delay for a pure mix, warm, and tape. I'm assuming pure just means a straight digital delay. That's an interesting way of describing a digital delay, a pure delay. Room reverb, hall reverb, and plate reverb on this reverb knob. And you've got a patch button, save edit, play stop, and a tap slash tuner. On the back side, power, cabson, on and off, USB plug, I'm assuming for updates, or maybe you can power it through USB too. An auxiliary plug for, you know, running in your phone or, you know, a tape deck, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Headphone out, output, input. I'm going to run it direct into my field recorder and then I'll monitor out of the headphone jack. If this sounds decent, it could be kind of a cool little thing to have. A little uh, practice headphone rig. In affordable board tradition, I'm going to use an affordable guitar. This time the Harley Benton single cut 450 plus in lemon burst. This is a very affordable Harley Benton. Just, I think they're just under 200 bucks before you ship them anyways. Um, and it is a solid guitar. I think I left this on uh, drop D last time I was using it. Let's see if we can figure out the tuner. There we go. Are we in tune? It seemed to do it. Capsim is on. Let's try it off. It's not dramatic, but it does something. So far, the clean sound doesn't sound bad. Let's uh, try rocking through some of these settings here. The 
with a little bit crispy and dirty in a bad way with the tone all the way up. Let's explore the different amp sounds and then we'll get into the effects. So that was clean one, here's clean two. Sounds voxy. So clean one is Fender Tweed Deluxe, channel two, or clean two is Vox AC30. Overdrive one is gonna be a JCM 800. on the gain control really craps out right about there and then there's nothing left. It did the same thing on the previous amp model. OD2, this is an orange AD30. <laughs> oh, and it does change the cab for all these as well. The Fender had a 1x12 tweed, the Vox had a 2x12, the Marshall had a 2x12, and the orange has a 4x12. <laughs> Distortion. The distortion one is a PV5150, because of course. Of course, with a 4x12 cab setting. And it sounds very, like, buzzy and digital on this setting, for sure. I know I'm 
not a high gain person anyways, but there's something about that one that sounds worse to me than the other settings. This is an Ingle Savage 120, also through a four x 12. Sounds kind of muddy and dark and distant in a way. stuff is not doing it for me. Kind of reminds me of my old Zoom 2100, honestly. All right, and then there's a bass setting, the Ampeg SVT bass amp, Mark bass, four by 10 cab. Oh, it's because I'm not on the neck pickup. I think it just doesn't sound good with guitar. Roll the tone all the way back. Let's try it with a baritone. Baritone is the closest thing I have to a bass guitar right now. I guess that works. I kind of wish the output to the headphones was a little bit hotter. It's a little bit quiet. And even with these good kind of like isolated foamy headphones on right now, I have a feeling if I was in a noisy room, I'd have trouble competing against, you know, the noise in the room to hear this. <laughs> Let's explore the effects and then I'll try to figure out the drum beat thing. All right, let's start with delay, pure delay. It does sound like a pure delay. Can I tap this? Nothing is happening. I thought this range was going to control the mix, but it actually controls the time. That's a little bit clunky, I think. it works. I don't understand the tap thing. It doesn't seem to do anything. All right, here's the analog delay. <laughs> Tape echo. bit of modulation there. Let's try it on the Vox setting here.
Yeah, I really wish that was a mixed range control or even a feedback control. And then the time control was that tap button, which doesn't seem to do anything as of right now. Let's leave it on analog, explore the reverb. Ah, we'll just turn this off. Here we go. too short and clangy. All right, now plate. surfiest option. It's interesting. What if the modulation is before or after the reverb? sounds bad. <laughs> it just sounds like a really, really fast slap back delay. I think that's the weirdest take on chorus I've ever heard. Flange now. makes more sense on the all the way clean channel. The chorus still doesn't make sense. This tremolo better uh, save the day, because otherwise I have no idea if this modulation section is even worth it. it is with all the effects on. The tremolo is clearly the only decent 
modulation effect on this wheel, the chorus, and that flanger. Woof! Woof! What is going on? Those were bad. Um, the delays all seem to be pretty standard. Two out of three on the reverb are fine. I think that room is just too quick. We've been on play mode. These are patches from the factory. Oh, there we go. So PO was user patches, those are ones I can edit, and FO is factory patches. I think they might just be a double. Yeah. Yeah, it's all the same patches that are on the user bank right now. This is a push thing too. Okay, when you push this in, all right, all right, we'll use patch two, and now we'll select uh, the drum rhythm number. That's what happens when you click this in. I've got a menu here. There's pop, rock, funk, metal, blues, fusion, and metro which has, oh, I think Metro is just metronome with a bunch of different time signatures. But uh, five presets for each genre there.
now we're into rock territory. territory now. Is it a fusion of jazz? Jazz fusion? And then there's just metronome. Exciting stuff, guys. So I didn't, you know, save anything or whatever, but you know, I'm, I'm sure that's simple. What is the price on these? Forty nine ninety nine on Amazon. That ain't bad. I think for fifty bucks, I think this is a a valid practice tool. Fifty bucks is kind of like a disposable thing. Like you're going on a road trip, you need something from the office, you need something. Uh, you know, in a quiet space, power it with battery. It has a belt clip back here. Clip it to your belt, looks super fashionable. It could be a problem solver for you. None of the tones in here are extraordinary. Anything to write home about. They honestly sound like they were lifted out of like a 1990s, you know, Zoom 505 or something like that. Uh, except for the modulation, so those were mostly garbage. Uh, the tremolo is fine. All the delays are fine. Uh, two out of three of the reverbs, I think, are decent. Um, still really bonkers that you control the speed with this knob for the delays. Um, I wish the speed was controlled with the tap button when the drum is not engaged. But, you know, you take what you can get. The amp tones. I think the clean and the vox and the initial Marshall sound were fairly decent. And the bass tone for people who, you know, play that long guitar. But yeah, it, this isn't going to become, you know, like some sort of cheat where you, you know, get yourself a bunch of tones for 50 bucks. This is a practice tool. It's not a performance tool. This is a practice tool. And there's nothing wrong with that. The, there's drum loops in here. 
they sound really cheap and cheesy and they sound like a toy, but the rhythms are there. There's something to practice on. There's something to mess around with and, you know, learn some rhythms and maybe, you know, spitball some ideas. For 50 bucks, I can't tell you not to buy this thing. I mean, it's up to you. Do you have a use for this? Then buy it. If you don't, then don't buy it. I mean, that goes for anything, right? So anyways, I'm looking forward to what you guys have to say down below in the comment section. Please like, subscribe, dislike, leave me rude and nasty comments, support us on Patreon, uh, buy a shirt if you're naked, and you know what? We have a Discord server now. I'll have a link for that down below if you want to join our Discord. Um, that's the newest social media thing we're doing. And other than that, you know what? Stay grounded. You deserve it. Bye, everybody.